Hello and welcome to the Bane Picks video for the Brooklyn Nets at Boston Celtics. I am your host for Lamps.com, Matthew Amato, joined here by two of my resident NBA experts and our resident Boston Celtics fan, Jason Gilbo. And uh, Braxton is not a Celtics fan. He is an OKC fan. And uh, we apologize profusely every single time we're reminded of that fact. So Jason, three and a half points. I already know what you're doing with this pick. And I don't agree with it, but go ahead. That's fine. Uh, I I think this series is just going to be completely back and forth. Um, I think we're going to see this one go six, seven games. And it's going to start tonight. I think the Nets win this game. I think we see one of those kind of vintage, you know, Durant takeover games. You know, he didn't shoot, obviously, particularly well in that game. Earlier, earlier game one, it was kind of Kyrie Irving, and that's about it. Um Braxton, you brought up the point of, you know, it's going to trade off. Irving's still going to, you know, maybe maybe he drops down to 25, 26 points. Um, what kind of worries me a little bit, I think, is, you know, Goran Dragic and Claxton really gave us some trouble off the bench. Um, you know, Dragic especially, he's he's always been kind of a weird guy to give the Celtics some problems, uh, even when he was playing with, with the Heat. When you kind of look at this game, I mean, how even it was – pretty much on everything except the rebounds. I mean, the Celtics out-rebounded, you know, the Nets pretty pretty significantly in that first game. Um, but turnovers were relatively the same. You know, three-point shooting for the Celtics, you know, has been kind of hit or miss all season. Um, you know, you, you kind of do worry about this team. I don't know if I'm going to bank on Marcus Smart, you know, going four and nine from three again. Um, not particularly his strong suit. I don't know if Horford, we're going to get the same type of game out of him. So I kind of expect a little bit of offensive drop off from a couple of the Boston Celtics guys that I don't usually rely on this from game to game. And the bench was particularly worrisome. Um, I think, you know, we saw a couple of times where, you know, the Celtics couldn't really get ahead even when Durant was off the floor or when Irving was off the floor. And I think that's kind of concerning for games moving forward. Um, so if they don't win those minutes, I don't think they actually win that game in game one. And really, those a close game that they could have almost blown. Uh, they had a horrible fourth quarter. So I think the Nets, this game is just going to be too close. I think the Nets even it out here tonight. I think Durant goes off. Um, I think Bruce Brown has a better offensive game than what we saw in, in game one. Um, and I think the Celtics, a little bit of shooting regression from a couple of their other guys, not named Tatum and Brown, kind of level this game out a little bit. So I think it's going 1 1 back to Brooklyn. So. My counter argument <laughs> is that, I mean, the thing is, I get the plus three and a half. I do think this game ends up being close. Um, I just don't I, think the I'm Nets money line. I don't think I'm touching a spread within this game or within this series, honestly. So that, I think every, every game is going to be within a possession. It's like, do I really want to just mess with a spread? Like, I think I'd rather just grab a money line. So that's what I mean. I think it's going to be close, but I don't think the Nets win. Um, and a lot of it has to do well, like I think Kevin Durant didn't play well because the Celtics played incredible defense. Like there was several possessions where Al Horford looked like freaking Michael Jordan out there defending Kevin Durant. It was and I don't I don't see why that's gonna taper off. Is Al Horford like does he get sore? Is he that old? Well, he, he is that old. He played 41 <laughs> minutes. Like like I said, I don't know if he like he was that was one of the best games I've seen Al Horford play in a Celtics uniform, even going back to when he was playing prior. Yeah. Like, I, I just, I don't know if I'm going to rely on that for every single game. Like, I think it's going to come a couple times a series. And if that's the case, I mean, Irving's still going to go off then. Like, he's get his points. He may not shoot six to 10 from three, but we know he's going to be around the 30 point range. Um, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I just expect a little bit of a drop off from some of these other guys like Horford and, and smart combined for 40 points. I don't think I've seen them do that all year. Well, that, and that's the other part is I felt like the Celtics offense actually looked a little discombobulated. Like it, it looked like it wasn't flowing and what saved them was Horford and smart were playing well. So it's, it's kind of like, I feel like if you, th I see the argument for Kyrie or uh, for Durant having a better game, but I also think like the Celtics offensively have a better game flow wise. So there's no reason to rely on Hortford and Marcus Smart. I think they get the ball to Tatum and Brown in better positions in this one. And I think they're able to thrive a little bit better. I It was a really I mean, odd both, game they, in my opinion. They both <laughs> shot 50% from the field. Like I don't, I don't understand what you're, 
look there from the Celtics offense. Like I know the turnovers were a little bit wonky, but like they still put up 115. And like Tatum and Brown both got theirs. Like they combined for 54. So I I don't know. Brown like, didn't shoot well though. Brown could have shot better from three with Curry on him. And to only get 115 against a Nets defense that's pretty subpar uh mostly is not great. It's not. So I like and we're expecting them to shoot better than 47% as a team combined. Like, again, like, I know the Nets defense has been bad, but, like, the Celtics offense is still an up-and-down shooting nature team. And, like, I think I'm just going to factor it into consideration of the series that, you know, there's going to be a game or two where Smart's really off, Horford's not really giving them much, and Derek White's been pretty cold for really the last two months. Um, and I, I don't know if Grant Williams is going to be the offensive firepower coming off that we really need. So, um yeah, I, I expect, I guess, a little bit of regression from the Celtics' offensive side. More than I guess, I guess the place would be a. I think just more layups and threes. Like that's when, it, like, the team looked like they got stuck with a few too many jump shots. And I also think they take more shots. Like there's less turnovers. Like I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if this the Nets defense, quote unquote, is for real. Like if they play about the same level and we see the same game, then I'm just going to expect that for the rest of the series. But I'm still don't believe that the Nets can really slow down the Celtics in terms. And again, I see what you're saying. They shot really well, but I just feel like the Celtics are going to get more shots. They're going to get higher quality shots in this game. I, I th- we'll see. I think the, I think the thing is too, is the Nets figured out they can't play Andre Drummond. Um, True. Like he was terrible. I mean, it was like Steven Adams. He was yeah. Terrible. I mean, he was bad. He was minus 13 and 17 minutes. Um, I think Claxton's going to end up just, they, they just went with him the rest of the game. I think they yeah. knew that they looked better with Claxton out there. Um, so I, I think they kind of figured that out where Celtics really kind of won that minutes, but this game, I mean, outside of that third quarter, like for the Celtics, I mean, this was a back and forth game that could have went either way. And really the Nets in the fourth should have kind of deserved to win that game. Well, it's funny now is me and Braxton are going to be rooting for the Celtics to prove you wrong. And you're going to be rooting for the Celtics because you're Celtics. I'll be happy either way. That's the positive. <laughs> so, you know. All right, Braxton, over under 226. Yeah, this is a tough one because Celtics defense, you know, they can hold anyone to 100 points. And you don't know how well the Nets are going to shoot here. They did go... I believe it was like 54 and 45 from three. So they shot very well. They did hit the over here. I think it goes slight under Celtics defense. They turn over the ball, like, or they cause turnovers. And I think they do that again, but the Nets defense, I don't see repeating 14 turnovers caused Nets um, offense. Do they shoot as well? And um, Celtics, I think slow the pace down. We don't want Kyrie and Durant to just go full on warp speed ISO and kind of get layups and threes. So Celtics defense is going to clamp here. I think under. All right. So we've got player props. Actually, you know what I want to take a look at? There's a new tab. Well, maybe not new. I've seen it once or twice called top trending or trending top picks. And let's see what the heck DraftKings is trying to shove down our throat. Green green out four plus Celtics players to record 20 plus points. Yes, plus 1,000. So I can't even bet them now. And then a uh, sparkling, sparking Jays, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to record 60 plus combined points I actually, at plus 120. Eh. I feel like I can create a same game parlay. They'll end up. Being you guys do not myself. enjoy the 420 specials, Matt, here that they're putting out. <laughs> There was no 420 special. I was hoping no, to get. That's what it is. <clears throat> they should have been plus 420 odds for like a bunch of different bets, <laughs> custom built. Um, plus 120 for that is way too short. Yeah, it's for really 60. short. All right, Jason, favorite player prop. Um, I mean, I, I like Al Horford over <clears throat> rebounds again. I mean. You know, I, I I do think the rebounding advantage is actually going to continue to be in the Celtics' favor. Um, and he's clearly going to be needed to play having minutes again. I don't really think they can go to Grant Williams to start to defend some of these Nets players. So um, he's going to be out there heavily uh, against, you know, a team that still doesn't really particularly rebound all that well, especially with Drummond's off the floor. Um, and to be able to get minus 105 odds when I've seen a lot kind of juiced up, this is actually a pretty decent value. So 
Uh, I think Horford, Horford, once again, he's going to dominate on the glass. Braxton? I'm going to go with Jalen Brown over steals. I know we kind of said we don't want to go to that anymore, but he has a four personal in the thing. first game. <laughs> I, I agree with it, though. It was probably true. But um, I'm going with it. He had four in the first game, and I think the Celtics kind of deployed him as a help defense weapon where Kyrie was driving and Smart was kind of like holding him and Brown would come in and go for the swipe. He can kind of go off Curry because they don't use him in the off-ball movement as much as they should. They should use him more on screens, but with him kind of standing around more than that, I think Brown helps more and gets more steals here. So I'm sticking by our argument um, earlier, I'm going under two and a half turnovers for Jason Tatum at plus 120. Again, I just I don't think the Celtics turn the ball over nearly as much. I definitely don't think their playmakers turn the ball over as much. If anything, you're going to see, you know, the weird turnovers, you know, tipped tipped passes that were going to be easy layups or maybe an air ball or something. But I think Tatum secures the ball. I think the Celtics are just efficient tonight. In uh, their game plan, as they should be. It's the Nets' defense. I mean, come on. We'll we'll see what happens. Anything else to talk about? I think under for Drummond to cross the board. I think it's a Stephen yeah. Adams situation where he plays like two minutes and then they kind of pull him. He gets maybe like five more the rest of the game. He's kind of unplayable in this specific matchup because of how well Orford defends and. He can kind of go out from three when he wants to. They're going to play him off the court, and I don't think he hits any of these. Yeah, it's it's kind of good value because if you look at the double-doubles, Andre Drummond is minus 450 to not get one. And you can just take his under eight and a half rebounds. You can take his under eight and a half points instead. Like, it's a better way to go. And they're already kind of projecting, I don't think, really him to get to double digits, it seems. Uh, damn. I was gonna see. I was gonna same game parlay him, but it looks like you can't. Drumming, drumming, drumming. Nah, it's not here. They know. They know they were gonna lose a bunch of money if they let that happen. So, so we're just gonna go under points and under rebounds. All right. So the picks are Jason with the Nets money line at plus one forty, and uh, us disagreeing with that pick, but. We didn't really give a pick on the other side. Under two, because I don't know if the Celtics money line is really value. And I also, I'm kind of with Jason. I don't want to touch the spread because I feel like they're all going to be one possession games, but I also feel like the Celtics win. Um, we got under 226 from Braxton at minus 110. Horford over 10 and a half boards, minus 105. Jalen Brown over one and a half steals, plus 105. Tatum under two and a half turnovers at plus 120. Drummond under eight and a half boards and points each at minus 115. If you're able to parlay those, please do. Um, I honestly think I'd be willing to go under six and a half points and probably like seven and a half boards because we're making these bets based off of him literally not playing. It's not like, oh, he's going to have a bad game. If he's only playing eight minutes in this one, He's not going to have those stats because if he does have those stats in those minutes, maybe he plays a little bit more. So I think it's worth the risk just to get a, a longer shot. But that's if you're able, even able to parlay them. Thank you guys for watching. As always, you can click subscribe and the bell to get notified when these videos go up. If you like this one, drop a like. If you did not, a dislike. Comment down below your favorite bets, and we will see you for the next one very soon.